Welcome to episode 11 of the Weekly Stash, where we talk everything about comics and everything going on in the comic book world, from TV shows to movies, and of course our beloved comic books. With me as always is Joseph Cagle and Ed Garrett. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hey, guys. I know I know. I always start and say we have a lot to talk about, but this week we have a, a boatload to talk about, from... Wolverine possibly dying to what Comixology decided to do this weekend, which was probably the most shocking thing of all because it kind of came out of nowhere. To give you a little background, uh, about a few weeks ago, Amazon bought out Comixology. Natural move for Amazon to make as they're huge into the publishing of digital books, so it made sense for them to go ahead and dive into comics by just eating up Comixology, which seems like a natural progression for them. So nothing really came of it. Comixology was supposed to be uh, run on its own and was going to stay intact, and Amazon didn't have any plans to dismantle it. To this point, they haven't. But this weekend, I get an email saying, hey, Comixology just came out with a new app. Go ahead and back up all your comics and send them, just back them up, hit restore in the current app, download our new one, and then click the restore button again, and all your books will show up. So I go ahead and do that, and I look at the new, and I look at the new app, there's no store. They completely removed the store from the app. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, did, did this not download right? What's... What's going on? And then I check my Twitter and see what's going on. And yes, it turns out they decided to remove the store from the app so that they don't have to pay their 30% for in-app purchases to Apple and are now forcing users to go to their website to purchase their apps. What do you guys think of this? This was, this was one of the dumbest moves I could think of. They had... The ultimate easy app to use. Go to one place, grab all your comics from almost every publisher, and take care of everything in one app. And now you've got to leave the app, go to the web store, sign in there, buy it, put it to the cloud, leave the web store, go back to your app, download it to your app, and watch it. And nobody's going to do that. That's the clunkiest, most user-unfriendly experience I think they could come up with. It almost makes you wonder why they bothered to buy Comixology in the first place if they were going to tell a large chunk of their audience, forget you. I, I don't get it. Yeah, it sounds awful to me. I can't, it just, I, I, you guys have put it the best. I just. <laughs> I mean, Jeff, Jeff Bezos is a very smart individual and someone who has shown he's willing to take losses in efforts of growing a company as he has done year over year over year with Amazon, as he just keeps losing money and pumping more money into making Amazon bigger and bigger and bigger. So one would have to assume that Jeff or some accountant with a calculator had some sort of knowledge to say, hey, we're going to lose this many people, but we're not going to lose 30% to Apple, so let's do it. I, 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 that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it, it, it just... It... I think we're losing losing Ed as Ed has froze. Well, I think but... just leave you scratch. Okay, let me know when I'm back on. What was yeah. that, Ed? You kind of froze up. Okay. okay. Uh, it, it just, it's sort of the stupidest thing to, to buy a highly successful thing and then sort of plow it into the ground, there, there are alternatives. And that's the thing is, it, although they power many of the alternatives that are out there, but there's other ways of getting your digital comics, and you can always go to print. But why would you take something that works well and throw it away? I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it sounds like a classic example of, like, five steps backwards. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, the only thing I can think is that they're doing it and trying it and seeing what happens, and then if they have a backup plan, if it completely backfires, that they're just going to go ahead and 
revert back and put the store back in and be like, oh, hey, look, we forgot to put the store in the version of the app. Whoops. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> well, in, in the main I, thing, I hope that's the case. So okay. there, there are alternatives just for folks to know that we found out that the DC app, which is powered by Comixology, so is Marvel. Uh, there's an Image app. There's a Boom Studios app. Those have not been affected so far. They still run. Uh, IDW has their app. Uh, Dark Horse has a separate app that also sells Dynamite. And then there's a Comics Plus app that sells a lot of independent comics. The, the problem would be is that you're going to a lot of separate apps by publisher to do what you could have done in one app before. But at least with those apps, you can still go in, purchase your, your DC or Marvel or whatever you know, individual publisher you've got, and not have to go back and forth between a web browser and an app to buy your comics. Right. Yeah. And that's the most user-friendly, was the most user-friendly experience to get all of your apps in one spot. And they kind of nuked it. But all the apps, like you said, that are powered by Comixology, DC Marvel Image, Boom, they're all still working. We're working on getting confirmation to see if their apps are going to get affected or not. It doesn't appear that it is. It was this decision by Amazon to do it for Comixology. So I don't think they have any oversight to the business of the other comic publishers. So I think in their best interest, they will keep theirs up and running. Um, but only, only time will tell. So the only thing I could say is stop buying books on Comixology and... Go buy print books, or go to the straight to the site, and then maybe Amazon will get their act together and bring Comicsology back to what it should be. So I leave it at that. Take our poll. We got a poll up. Let them know what everybody else is thinking. If they're on the same same page from most of what I've read on the internet, most people are on this in the same boat as us. So let us know what you think. Check out the article on tmstash.com and uh, share your thoughts and take our poll. Uh, moving on to the next big news that really just sprang up uh, this weekend. It was uh, Wolverine going to die soon? Yeah, that's uh, that's the word I've heard is that uh, they've obviously in, the, in his series they've stripped him of his healing factor and apparently they're building uh, to another series that is, or not a series, but a, a story that's going to be called Three Months to Die, and then I guess soon after that, they're going to do a miniseries titled The Death of Wolverine. Uh, I haven't read a specific date on this, but I assume it's going to be summer, fall. So, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of interested, but it's, it's Marvel killing off another character. But you know, they did. They did. They did go on to list how many people they've killed and brought back before. So this could only be temporary. <laughs> <laughs> right. When you look at the, when you look at the list of everyone that's died and came back, it's. I mean, they just brought basically Peter every Parker. character. They're, they're bringing Peter Parker back this next Wednesday. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the real news is you may have some weird Wolverine stories coming up. So maybe <laughs> maybe it's good. Uh, so, they mix up the universe a little bit, but I'm kind of annoyed by it, <laughs> personally, because, just, come on, Marvel. But, along with that, wasn't there, we also had some other good Marvel news with Original Sin, right, Joe? Yeah, bear with me, this might be a little long-winded, but it's, I think it's pretty good. So, Original Sin started out this past Wednesday with issue number zero, and it kind of starts off with the character Nova, who's kind of a he's kind of fallen into this new superhero role. He's only a teenager, but he actually goes to the Watcher and takes the time to ask him why he does what he does, who he does it for, why does he record these events and not help. He has shown exactly why that is, as he sees when, at one point in time where him and his people actually did help a civilization, but it ended in badly as the civilization ended up destroying themselves so they vowed never ever to do that again and just to watch and just to record and and he was somewhat satisfied with that answer but at the end of it he you know he had brought the watcher a token from you know from a, a, a thing he he witnessed and he asked him all he was wanted to know is is his father alive his father was the last Nova and has been missing for 
a long time. And as the issue ends, he just kind of turns around, and the Watcher rarely ever speaks, but he utters the words, he is alive. And so that's going to you know, lead us into the original sin, which is obviously the main story is about the Watcher and who killed the Watcher. But other uh, news have been kind of released as in some of the tie-ins, because some of the tie-ins seem like they're going to reveal other sins and secrets in the Marvel Universe are going to come out, one of which is has to do with the Amazing Spider-Man. Apparently, the spider that bit Peter Parker before it died, it bit a woman. And they're going to introduce her into the Amazing Spider-Man in uh, the Sin tie number issue number four and five, and her character name is Silk. Additionally, in the uh, Uncanny X-Men tie-ins, they're going to go over the last will and testament of Charles Xavier, which is said to really even change the, the foundation of the X-Men even more than it already is. So there's that. Then you have the uh, Daredevil, who has recently moved to San Francisco. They're going to uh, introduce him to his mother for the first time, I believe. And uh, that might be all that I've got on Original Sin, but I, it's going to keep on going in that sense. Oh, there is one other thing. Angela, from that was just introduced from Age of Ultron into Guardians of the Galaxy from Image, is going to be placed into the Asgardian world as the secret daughter of Odin, which is going to make her the brother of Thor and Loki. So that's going to throw another twist into that uh, as well, and that's going to be called that's going to be called the Tenth Realm because they're saying that her world is a realm that was, I guess, uh, forgotten until now or whatever. So that's with that's that the most interesting story of them all. Yeah, and, and so so I'm I'm really excited about Original Sin uh, moving forward, and that's just probably the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty fantastic. I'm looking forward forward to that, especially uh, the storyline with the Tenth Realm. That that can go a lot of ways. So that oh, can yeah. that can take off amongst multiple universes there. So looking forward to that. And uh, Ed, you had some cool DC stuff with this week, too, with some cool stuff with Batman Eternal and with Flash, right? Oh, yeah. Now, over in the Flash, uh, they decided to skip a couple of steps. They introduced a character as dead. Uh, <laughs> you know, Wally West, who, who fans have been clamoring for since the New 52 began, we knew he was going to come looking different. He Did we lose you? Not redheaded. He doesn't have. I don't know. Tell me if you hear me again. Can you hear me? Now? I can hear you now. Back up. Uh, back up a little bit. Okay. Well, we knew when they brought the flashback, he would not be red-haired and green-eyed. He's he's now biracial. He's a kid. Uh, they flash-forwarded, if you'll pardon the pun, to five years from now, and this kid's dead. Uh, he's dead in a car wreck that also injured Iris West. Uh, but the, the flash of 20 years from now is coming back to our time to try to prevent the events that led to Wally dying. And that's setting up a whole new arc that's coming out. Uh, and the Flash Annual comes out this week, and it will have Wally alive in our time moving forward, and it will get a chance to see what his personality would be like. We just see him lying in the street at the start of the book and then later identifying him as being Wally. So that's huge. Uh, the other thing, in, in Batman Eternal, you see the origin story for the Spoiler, who is a great character who has also in past continuities been Robin and Batgirl. Uh, she discovers her dad's secret identity as the costumed crook Clue Master, and he tries to kill her. She barely gets away, and that's setting up the storyline where she eventually becomes Spoiler. Batman Eternal has turned out to be exceptional, and I, I'm loving it so far. It's a weekly series. It's worth picking up, even though you're picking up an issue every week. Uh, so that that's the big stuff for for DC this past week, and they'll be they'll be moving forward with that, especially with the Flash Annual this week. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, on top of that, we have to look forward to what's going on with Free Comic Book Day coming up this week, right? Yeah, in uh, in DC they're doing Futures End which is, it sets up this whole set of books that they're going to be doing later this year, set a few years in the DC future, they'll bring Batman Beyond into the New 52, which a lot of fans of that animated series will be thrilled to see, but it's sort of an apocalyptic version, vision of what could happen to the DC universe 
and people's attempts to stop it from happening. So it's one of those what if books set five years in the future, and it's going to kick off with Free Comic Book Day. Uh, Valiant is doing Armor Hunters kicking off, and if you're not reading Valiant, you're missing out on one of the best comics universes that are out there. Now this is where Exo Man of War. Uh, his armor does come from another planet, and there's someone killing everyone who has that type of armor, and he's coming to Earth. It's written by Robert Menditti, who writes Green Lantern and now Flash. Uh, so that'll be out among a whole bunch of other books. I know, uh, Joe, you've got some stuff uh, for some of the other publishers on Free Comic Book Day. Yeah, they're uh, they're going to do uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, there's supposed to be a Rocket Raccoon tale in the mix somewhere. Uh, we know there's going to be a Spider Verse story, maybe intro, uh, among among very other things. Uh, and of course, Original Sin's going to be going on, so I'm sure they're going to have something for that. Uh, lots of good stuff to look forward to on the Marvel side for sure. Yeah, I'll be picking up Guardians. I think that's that's going to be. I think everyone's getting Guardians now. Yeah, I know. I figured I'm gonna have to get there early. My store only lets you grab like two or three books, anyways. So that those will be my two <laughs> for sure. So uh, moving on away from comics a little bit, and I want to talk about what's going on with the uh, TV shows this week, as far as Arrow and Agents of Shield. We had two other amazing episodes. I guess we'll start off with the one that's least amazing this week, which I would probably say is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, only because Arrow was amazing. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this week picks up, uh, again, continuing where Captain America left off, and they're introducing more characters from the Marvel Universe with Blackout. I'll let Joe talk about it because you were you were geeked out about that. Yeah, and, uh, during the beginning of the week, they uh, they released the that that first you know minute and a half online, and I watched and I kind of geeked out because uh, most people know Blackout as from the uh, Ghost Rider universe, and it was more of a supernatural character, whereas his original character was as it was in the show, it was more of a scientific uh, thing. But uh, I thought it was a. Uh, I thought he was pretty cool just to have him there, and uh, and I don't know, just because of the way he kind of exploded, maybe we'll see him in a supernatural element down the road as he maybe makes a deal with the devil. I don't know. Uh, it kind of wouldn't fit with the format of the show at the current time, but uh, down the road it would be good. But uh, I thought the show made some uh, some good strides as uh, we as Sky finally learned. Uh, Ward's true uh, intentions is uh, she discovered that he's the, the the bad guy, and so she's kind of freaked out now. And but she's the only one that knows. So I think there it was a good building block episode. I thought you know for what's to come next. Yeah, definitely crazy with Ward actually getting back into the ship and running away with Sky. So the, the penny was, drop that was a smart thing too. You remember the penny drop? Yes. Yeah. The that was. That was huge. I was I was waiting for her to drop the ball on that, and I was like, "Oh, she remembered." <laughs> uh, so that was that was pretty cool. But I'm I'm surprised that he was able to get in and get away. Yeah. Uh, especially as suspicious as uh, who was the he a agent that was heading up that special location? I can't remember his oh, name. Oh, I can't remember his name, but it was a uh, Patton Oswalt was playing. Yeah. It. Yeah. So. I was, I was surprised that he managed to kill him. And I think I think next week, a uh, girl from, I wish I could remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, from How I Met Your Mother, she plays Agent uh, Maria Hill. I think she's supposed to be on next week. Cool. Yeah, that's another amazing, that series is just getting better and better. But what's probably even better is probably Arrow. <laughs> man, I tell you what, man, that episode... <laughs> How do you feel about it? <laughs> well, I mean, we at the same time we discover that someone else knows the the identity of Oliver Queen, but by the end of that episode, that person's done, and it's <laughs> and, it, and it's a fairly major character uh, in in the story, and it, and it really uh, I think it's really gonna hit home with with Oliver, and he's really gonna. I mean, it's going to be payback more than ever, I think, now. I mean, it's it's going to be 
not just eye, you know, eye for an eye because uh, Deathstroke only has one eye left. But I think it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be game time. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's. I I can't wait for it. I can't wait for the final battle. I know it's gonna come down to like the end of the season though, so I'm not sure where we're at on. There's there's three more episodes to go. Three? Yeah, mm-hmm. I knew there's there's only a couple more. So these last three episodes should be pretty crazy. Because we still we still have Sebastian Blood running around. Um, we still have Malcolm Merlin on the horizon. I think maybe because that, I imagine that was the, I imagine he comes back the last episode and they cliffhang him into next season. Because if you remember, she was about to tell you know both of them that he was still alive when the car hit him, so she never got to release that to them. So she was the only person that knew he's alive. Right. So that kind of uh, I think that that was kind of a, I guess a breadcrumb to the the near future. Yeah, that I didn't I still didn't see that coming, that ending. Oh we won't, man, we won't especially, spoil it, but yeah, especially well. the circumstances. You know the choice, the decision. <laughs> right. the the way The way that it's done is very much how Slade would do it. <laughs> so that was awesome, Ed. You finally saw Captain America. Congratulations, yes, buddy. Oh, I loved it. And and you know the thing that the thing that impresses me with Marvel is they do an unapologetic comic book movie. They're they're not trying to meet some other fan base, they understand who their fan base is. Uh, that was really well done from the get-go. So I, I, I really did enjoy that. Yeah, I, I, I saw it in 2D, so I, I didn't get the chance to see it in 3D. But I, I have a feeling I would have gotten pretty dizzy watching it in 3D. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was all right. Did, did you notice any issues with any of the action sequences with it in 2D? Not really. Uh, it 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 came across pretty well. It was just there was the action was really fast and furious, but it it, it came across okay in two D for me. Okay. Now, now tell me this, Ed. How did you like? This is my favorite thing about the whole movie. How Captain America used his shield and environment. You know, like oh. everywhere he was going, he was combat rolling over the top of a crate just to get to the next guy, or you know, just see how efficient and tactical. Or just running through walls. Really- yeah, how brilliant he is. I I really liked how he used the shield, and not just the shield, but you know when they're when they're in the car and they yeah. bust out, they're, they're scooting on the door. Uh, he, he, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. Exactly. I mean, this is where he may be sort of the innocent good guy, but he's a brilliant tactician when it comes to fighting, uh, and that really came across well. He he truly is the ultimate super soldier, and they really brought that across well. I thought Scarlett Johansson was outstanding as Black Widow. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there was nothing wrong with her performance at all. I love Falcon uh, being in there. I thought that was cool. Uh, really, there there was nothing that I could complain about in that movie. There, there really was not. That was done just right. A- elevator scene was one of my favorites too. Oh, that, was <laughs> that was awesome. Anybody yeah. want to get off before we get started? <laughs> 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 you know, he he really has that character down right, and that's a hard character to do because you've got somebody who is a really tough fighter who mm-hmm. can beat anybody, but also is the ultimate good guy from the '40s with that with that sense of right and wrong that doesn't seem to exist today, and he pulls it off without coming across as preachy or or hokey. And he's one of the most human. He's like he's. He's one of the most human characters. He's and, like, that, and it's almost like that was part of the, the, the building blocks of that story. Is it, is it the only person that could survive this movie was the guy with those morals and values of yesterday. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that kind of unwavering loyalty and American you know, hero, that's the kind of guy it was going to take to get through this movie. So it was, it was, like that brilliantly. It was exceptionally well done. Of course, I mean, I may not be a Marvel guy, but I knew who the Winter Soldier was. Uh, but I like how they played that. I, I like how, you know, if there's someone who was not a not a really big fan of comics and just came to see it, that would be a bit of a surprise for them, the way they revealed it. And they handled it well. Yeah. And, of course, I like the Stan Lee cameo. He's in everything. 
Yeah, that was great. It was great. That was awesome. I'm so fired, man. <laughs> <laughs> You always know he's going to be in there, but then when he pops up, you're always kind of like, oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. I, will, I, I do know that, unfortunately, I can't remember which one, he's not going to be in in either Spider-Man or X-Men coming up. I, I remember reading a while back, there was one of them, he could not make it because he would. He said he'd rather go to a con and meet the fans than, than film a cameo. So he won't be in one of those two films. I can't remember which one. Well, hey, if I was getting 200 bucks for every autograph, I'd go to the con, too. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, but that that is cool. He'd rather meet the fans. It is. I'm just being silly, but uh, I, I did like the uh, the short uh, the the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't know how I'd feel about that since I'm not a huge Mar Marvel fan, but I like how they handled that. And uh, I actually had a little bit of hope after seeing their version of Rocket Raccoon that he could come across fairly fairly well. And yeah, you, you did, and you did stay to watch the extra scenes. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. That's that, that. That was a fairly exciting sequence, I thought. That, that really was. We won't say much about it here in case folks haven't seen it. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So I finally caught it to you. Right. And have we covered everything that's coming out next week? I mean, really, we have comic book day. That's there's a, there's a few more things. Uh, of course, the the Batgirl annual and the Flash annual from DC. Uh, Image has two. Coming out, which if you're not into Chew, that is one of the most awesome and strange books that's out there. Ten Grand has another book out there. Uh, Valiant has, and I'm, I'll mispronounce it, but it's R A I. I think it's pronounced Rai, but they've got a brand new comic coming out, number one, that brings back a, a character from the past for from Valiant that's coming out. It looks to be really good. Uh, so there, there's some pretty cool comics coming out this week from the Independence as well as from DC. Uh, yeah, Marvel does have kind of a short week, I guess, because of this weekend, but they do have, uh, for me at least, good ones, uh, X-Force, Wolverine, all the X-Men, Silver Surfer, and of course the amazing Spider-Man number one this week. That's the big one. Awesome. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this week. I know it's, it was a long episode, but there was a lot to talk about, so thanks a bunch for hanging out with us for so long tonight. Look forward to Free Comic Book Day this upcoming Saturday. And the following Sunday, don't forget, is actually Star Wars Day. So uh, hit up your May the Lego Lego store. That's where I'm headed. They have some things going on for Star Wars Day. So, everybody, thanks again. And uh, keep reading the stash. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>